building technology, home building technology, like every other aspect of our life, has changed a lot as technology has grown. It's been interesting to watch over the last 40 years how building science, that term didn't even exist when, uh, when I started into this business, building science. Now building science is huge. The technology associated with materials and products and processes and fasteners has increased radically in the last few years. Let's say even in the last 15 years, there's been this big push to green building, sustainability, um, renewability, and efficiency in structures. What these technologies are really doing is increasing efficiency in our structures, or at least trying to increase efficiency in our structures. Efficiency in energy consumption, efficiency in livability and how the space works, efficiency in keeping the water out and the and the climate controlled air in, increasing, increasing efficiency in water usage and how the daylight gets in and the daylight, it's just about increasing efficiency, including efficiency in how long the structure will last without having to be repaired or even maintained. This efficiency in products also shows up in efficiency of, sometimes, in efficiency in installation. There are cement board sidings now that not only last a long time and hold paint very well, but in many cases come pre-finished. So there, the efficiency that is the goal of many of the vendors and manufacturers and designers of modern building um, materials and systems is to make it efficient from the moment it shows up on your job to the moment you move into the house to the moment that you pay your first utility bill. Efficiency seems to be at least part of what is driving building science. If you are really interested in building science and cutting edge green um, building solutions, or especially if you're building a house for yourself that you're gonna live in for decades, I'm sorry to say, but this, this house is probably not gonna be the best example of those processes. So I see three reasons that this house is not going to showcase all of the latest and greatest building technologies. The first of those, the elephant in the living room is, it is a spec house, it's built on speculation. We are building it to sell and these things don't cost all of them a ton of money, but all of them put together cost a significant amount of money and we would be spending money that belongs to someone else for something that they may or may not value. That's item one. Item two, Southwestern Oregon is a very temperate climate. We don't have big temperature swings in either direction. And so especially around energy savings, it takes a long, long, long time for that money to ever come back because the difference between the inside temperature and the outside temperature is just never as great as it may be where you live. And then the third reason is that for the last 25 years that I've been in Oregon as a general contractor, I've specialized in technical concrete and non-typical structures. Everything from swimming pools to small houses to suspended concrete decks and bridges and, and tricky roofs and all kinds of stuff. But I haven't specialized in custom homes. And so I have not made myself familiar with the changing building science technology as it came to the table because my clients were demanding it. When you're adding on or modifying bathrooms or kitchens or adding a wing on a house, you are held hostage to the pre-existing condition. And so the value of those building science innovations shrinks. So I'm not the best guy for it. So I'm gonna to stick to what's in my wheelhouse. I'm gonna build this house square, plumb and true. I'm gonna use tried and true methods. I'm going to use the building science that is required by code and good judgment. I'm gonna make darn sure the water is excluded and we're gonna put up a house that anybody would be proud to live in and that most people can afford. Now don't get me wrong, we're gonna do this right. In fact, we're gonna exceed essentially every code requirement. I can't help it, I like it that way. And it's the same with the materials. Materials have come a long way. We have wonderful materials available now and I have them available here and the ones that are best suited to this climate this part of the world with the challenges that a house has to deal with here are the ones that we're going to be using. We live in a time when information like this is available. I mean, you can get on the internet and find great information on sustainability and efficiency in buildings. If you're coming to YouTube, I recommend Matt Reisinger. That guy eats and breathes and sleeps 
building science and building efficiency. He's the best I've run across. I like him. His world is not my world, but man, he knows his stuff. Learning online is great. World of information out there, but you just can't beat sitting down and talking to somebody who knows. And I was lucky enough through the channel to get acquainted with Dave Taylor from Albuquerque, New Mexico. In fact, he drove to our meet and greet in Arizona and he and I visited probably for an hour. He just, he just downloaded just so much information on me and I took copious notes and, and got his evaluation of cost benefit analysis and he connected me with, with other online resources and books and he's passionate and it's his niche. All right, all right. Does that make sense? It does, it does. Processing. Buffering. Buffering. Yeah, 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 that's right. <laughs> if you can find somebody like Dave Taylor, you're really going to learn what will work best in your area, which is the only thing you're interested in. Because it's possible to throw away a lot of money on efficiency and sustainability in areas where it doesn't make sense. It's not a one-size-fits-all building solution. If you are a person living in the American Southwest, you are probably within reach of Dave reach out to him. We've got his information in the notes and he can educate you on sustainability and green building practices in the American Southwest and probably in other places. He can turn you on to resources that will apply to where you might be at. Our first uh, decision around this sort of thing was on the foundation. Do we cast it in place? Do we use CMU or do we use an ICF form block like Fox Blocks? Dave recommended Fox Blocks. We kicked it around and finally decided we're going with CMU. These are the kinds of decisions that you're gonna be wrestling with and only you can answer. You're gonna do it the way you want to do it. And that is always one of the criteria. How much it costs? Can I afford it? Can I do it later? You'll figure it out. Find some qualified help. As always, thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.